teacher talk about chemistry. Mm -hmm. Next we'll have a teacher who will talk about biology and uh, AP tests, AP, uh, subject test exams. Um, that's his specialty. Let's welcome Mr. Brian Day. Hi guys, uh, so I'm Brian. I recently graduated from UC Davis with a microbiology degree. I'm currently working at a Stanford research lab in neurology, and I actually had the chance to look at some of the PhD applications for neurology as well. So I'm well aware of what kind of things that you guys are looking for. And just a quick show of hands, how many of you guys have kids at around ninth grade right now? Yeah, and how about 10th? Okay, and 11th? Any senior parents in here? No, okay, good. So that means, well, by then you should have already applied for school, so shouldn't be a problem. So what I'm here to talk to you a little bit about today is biology and all the biology aspects in terms of things that might pertain to careers and as well as the SAT2 exam and the AP Biology exam. So if you're interested in pursuing a degree in any of these things, you're going to need the biology AP exam as well as the SAT2 bio. Both of these heavily impact your understanding and well um, behavior in these subject areas. And both the AP biology and chemistry exam are very important in determining your acceptability into these majors and these courses. So, a little bit of, okay, about the biology course. A lot of schools will be teaching out of one of these two textbooks. The general biology course will be taught usually out of something like this image you see on the bottom. Now, it's a lot less detailed than the one you'll see above, which is usually the AP Biology book. Now, right off the bat, you can see that there are quite a number of chapters in these books. And you'll see that there's really not that many topics to go over, right? You have maybe seven topics beyond an introduction. And that tells you that each of these topics has a lot of material. There's a lot of stuff to memorize, a lot of things to be aware of. So that means you need to really prepare for these exams and prepare for the materials that are going to be on this exam. So first of all, a little bit simpler of the two exams. The SAT2 biology exam consists of 80 multiple choice questions. 60 of these questions are going to be general questions that can be taken out of any of the materials in the books provided. The other 20 questions are things you can pick. You can either pick the ecology portion or the molecular biology portion. So therefore you can get a total of 80 questions. How you want to do it is up to you. So then people will almost always ask, what's the difference? All right, what's the difference between ecology and what's the difference from that to molecular biology? So generally the E section will pertain to how communities interact, how animals interact with each other, Generally, people will say this subject is a little bit easier than the others because it doesn't involve as much memorization. This exam requires you to kind of have a basic idea of how biology works and then kind of integrate that and use your mind to analyze graphs, to analyze data presented. The M section is a little bit more challenging. This forces you to memorize a lot more information because the stuff presented here are more molecular stuff. So how cellular respiration works, how photosynthesis works. What are the enzymes here? What do they do? All of that stuff is more rote memorization compared to the E section. So, to summarize then, the SAT2 biology exam requires a lot of memorization, a lot of stuff to be able to prepare for. So what I always recommend students do is take this exam early before you get overwhelmed with a lot of the AP courses you have in school or a lot of the other stuff you need to worry about. So generally speaking, this is something you want to get done early because it requires, again, a lot of memorization. So I recommend you either take the exam in early June, so right after your ninth grade course for those ninth grade parents out here, you can take the exam in June, basically start around now, start preparing for the exam, take a look at the material required, it takes about two to three months to get familiar, especially with the amount of practice exams required for this uh, test. The other option is now after you finish your course while all of it is fresh in your mind for both after AP or after the regular biology course, take the summer, review the material, take practice exams, take a look at the materials you need to know, or take a class here. All of those are great options, and that will prepare you for the exam in October. Both of these options are great. Now, 
moving on to the S AP Biology exam. It's a very similar exam in terms of the material tested, but the way they test it is completely different. You'll notice that I have written up here there is a free response portion. This means the answer is not going to be written on there. It's basically going to be an empty sheet, and you're going to fill out all the information required to get the points there. There's no kind of guideline, right? If you have a multiple choice exam, one of those five is going to be the answer. If you guess, you might get it right. There's no way to guess here. You have to really know your stuff. And on top of that, the AP Biology exam requires you to have a deeper understanding of the material presented. So not only do you have to memorize the steps involved in every single biological reaction, you need to be able to understand why that's there. If I take one of these steps out, what's that going to do to my organism? What's going to happen? So this you can't really do necessarily with just forced memorization. This comes with practice. So again, this is very similar in terms of the information, but you still have to take the time to prepare for it. So those of you with students in their 11th grade, they should be coming up on their exam in about May. And by now, they hopefully have prepared for it. I will be having an AP Biology <coughs> course next month. And then if you're interested, you can take a look at that as well. But generally speaking, the school should have prepared you well enough. Your, your student tends to struggle a little bit. Maybe some patchwork is needed. Now, the difference between the AP Biology exam and the SAT2 exam is the scoring scale. 1 to 5 for the AP, 200 to 800 for the SAT2 bio. The 1 to 5 grade scale tells you that there's not very much room for distinguishing between a student who is a 4 and a student who is a 5. So generally, if you want to score a 5, you need to get about 75% to 80% of the questions right. Seems pretty simple, but that's not as easy as it sounds because mostly the free response portion, they do it in a sort of a checklist style grade. You either have the answer or you don't. They're gonna check every single time you have the right answer. If you don't have the answer, you basically don't get the question right. Even if you've written correct things, they're not the things that they're looking for, so you won't necessarily get the points, which makes it a lot more difficult to do. But that being said, it's still very possible. Unlike the SAT2 bio, where you just kind of, as long as you get all the questions right, you're gonna get an 800. All right, so that's a very quick overview of a lot of the AP Biology stuff. Now, as for more of a sort of idea of how much this really impacts your application, I know a lot of you guys are concerned about applications and what kind of tests I need to take, and what do I need to do to prepare my student or my child for kind of a college career path. Now, a lot of the applications that I've seen go into the PhD programs, they are looking for things beyond just test grades. Test grades are great. AP Biology, SAT2, great. You're going to need them. But there aren't things you should stress too much about. If your student or your child gets a 750, don't force them to take it again to get another 800. Unless, for some reason, they're getting like 500, then yes, take it again. But don't pressure them there. When we look at the PhD applications, we're not looking for how well your student can test on these scores. These are more of things you can look at to say, I'll take a look at your uh, application now. If you score above it, you've met the criteria, I'll take a look at your application. So it's still important to focus on these things, but you also want to be aware of other stuff. So don't force your child and prepare for the exam all summer long and do nothing else with it. Because when we look at applications, we don't look at just what you've been able to test. That doesn't show your capacity for things. We'll look for things like internships, what you've been able to do with your life. Have you been able to kind of do some research or have you been able to participate in community service? All that kind of stuff is very important on top of what we've just covered. All right, so that kind of concludes my information on all the tests and whatnot. Are there any questions in terms of AP Biology, what we need to worry about here? Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people ask me that question. So biology is very easy in the sense that anybody can take the exam, depending on how much work you put into it. So most ninth grade courses give you almost all of the information. I would say they give you about 70% of the information. They don't give you the necessary testing skills to be able to take these exams. So you're not going to be prepared for the same style of testing. So that comes with just doing a lot of practice exams and looking at the information that a lot of books have or maybe taking the course 
they'll guide you through the process of taking the exam as well as all the necessary information to take those exams. But yes, I would say they should have pretty much sufficient knowledge of what's needed. So for the same question, so for the planning purposes, mm -hmm. a ninth grader after taking biology, if taken another summer, would to study, possibly could prepare for that uh, subject test. Right? Yes, definitely. Yes. So it's uh, the SAT, the, the biology test, is that required for the engineering uh, in your career? Depends on what kind of engineering it's career you're looking for. So generally, it's not necessary for a computer science degree because you're mainly focused in math and kind of knowledge. And yeah, that kind of stuff. So it's not necessarily required. It's always good to have. Uh, one thing that most parents don't know about a lot of the AP classes and exams is that the units you get for taking those courses serve as units you can use in college. So they're not just kind of stuff that you take an exam and you forget about. How long did the, the AP uh, biology classes from Shibu? Like a two months, three months preparation? It's about a 10 week course ten and then course. you just okay. power through two hours a week. Any other questions? No? All right.